pretty much a Da Vinci of 19th century England, Sir David Brewster was everything. Astronomer, inventor, philosopher, writer, scientist, mathematician, preacher, and an unrivaled genius. At the time, his accomplishments were unsurpassed, receiving honors upon honors and renown across Europe. Yet today, the legacy and scientific advancements of Sir David Brewster remain largely unknown. Hello and welcome to the second episode of The Real History Of, where I take a look at the real people and events that inspired the settings of popular video games. I'm your host Christopher, the video game historian, and on this episode, I'm going to take a look over the real history of Sir David Brewster. Born December 11th, 1781 in Jedburgh, Scotland, David Brewster was considered a child prodigy. He was able to build telescopes, stereoscopes, and sundials by the age of 10 with the help of his friend James Vice, the peasant astronomer. By the age of 12, after learning everything Scottish elementary schools could offer him, he was admitted into the University of Edinburgh, where he completed all the prescribed courses, but without earning a BA. By 19, he will be awarded an honorary MA by continuing his studies as a divinity student. Brewster will also be awarded a license to preach by the Church of Scotland as a minister of the established Scottish order. All this before he was even 25 years of age. His time as a preacher, though, was not long. As a colleague of his, James Hogg once wrote that his first day on the pulpit was also his last. And while it was a pity for Kirk, it was a good day for science. With the influence of his friend Henry Brogham, he turned his scientific interests to the study of light, optics, and the development of scientific instruments. By 1808, he had not only received an honorary doctorate of letters by the University of Aberdeen, but was also appointed as the editor of the Edinburgh Encyclopedia. In 1813, his experiments regarding light and optics were published in A Trustees Upon New Philosophical Instruments. During his life, Sir David will receive fame, but not fortune, for his scientific advancements. He made discoveries in many areas, including the physical law of metallic reflection and light absorption, the optical properties of crystals, and made improvements upon the stereoscope, as well as convincing the British to adopt the Fresnel lens for lighthouses. He created a new form of science called optical mineralogy, which came about from his studying of the various minerals in crystals. During this time, he will also come up with his own law regarding light known today as Brewster's Angle, in which he won the Rumford Gold and Silver Medal for. When it came to analyzing the work of Sir Isaac Newton and his work with the light spectrum, Brewster was reluctant to accept the emissions theory of light, but never abandoned the idea altogether. Though, when it came to the theory that light was a wave, he would not accept it. In fact, when writing his trustees on optics, he will omit Fresnel's wave theory of light, partly because he was not one to move with the times. Now, while he will spend his life working for the advancement of science in light and optics, his biggest invention, and what he is primarily known for, is the invention of the kaleidoscope in 1816. Despite originally intending it to be used as a scientific instrument, the small device captured the enjoyment of all class of people, from the poor to rich, and the ignorant to educated. Though it sold over 200,000 in the first three months in Paris and London, Sir David never actually saw a dime for it. Even though he was awarded the patent for it in 1817, an error on the application meant that anyone could copy it with impunity. Even though he would not make a living off the rewards of his invention, Sir David will still go on to earn much higher acclaim and renown in Europe. The Royal Academies of Russia, Denmark, Sweden, and Prussia will all award him their highest distinctions that could be given to a foreigner. He was knighted by William IV in 1832, and was a founding member of, and eventually serving as its president, of the British Association for the Advancement of Science. He later served as principal of both the United Colleges of St. Salvador and St. Leonard and St. Andrews in 1837, and then the University of Edinburgh in 1859. When Darwinism and his theory of evolution began to be accepted by the masses, Brewster became one of the biggest critics and opponents of the idea, stating that there was no evidence, neither in the past or the present, to support such a claim. He would advocate that his readers to stand against it and oppose the theory. As for his personal life, not much is known about it, despite what is written about him by his daughter, Margaret Maria Gordon, in her book, The Home Life of Sir David Brewster. 
It is known that he lost his first wife in 1850, and after that he turned back to God and the scriptures to restore his faith. At 74 he will remarry once again, and at the age of 86 he will contract pneumonia. On February 10, 1868, at Allerby Melrose, Sir David Brewster will pass away from the disease. His legacy, though relatively unknown today, still lives on through his countless advancements in science and the books he's written upon the subjects of light and optics. For more information about his work, some of his more notable pieces are listed in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and click the like button, and as always, please leave your thoughts in the comments below.